Four more weeks until we lock the playoff picture, and genuinely anybody can make a run for the uh, spot in the top six. Here you see the fans who've lined up to cheer on their favorite teams as Licorice strolling into the studio with Jensen and Sneaky in tow. They'll be facing off against Sunday and Ryu, who were preparing for the matchup not too long ago in their ready room out on stage as we speak. Hello and welcome everyone to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we follow the trends of the league and preview the day's matches until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champion Select. Let's start with the schedule. Taking a look, first up, Hunter Thieves in Cloud9 faced off on Summoner's Rift, followed by CLG versus Clutch, with Team Liquid taking on FlyQuest for Game 5. For those looking for the NALCS Lounge Freak, Sneaky, and Meteos will be bringing you Echo Fox versus TSM today on Riot Games 2. Looking at that first matchup, though, Cloud9 fans might be bummed they lost to Echo Fox, but let's be honest, they're still supporting a top two team. And I think their loss to Echo Fox was not super damning. They played a really volatile top lane and a losing bot lane, and they just didn't play it that well. So their top lane gets exploded, their bot lane loses kind of on its own, and then next thing you know, the game's snowballing out of control. Yeah, and I think both of those teams are still really good, right? right. Cloud9 lost to the only team that's beaten them. It's just ended up happening twice. Right. And they've counterpicked for Licorice's top side so many times. That was just kind Kind of the other side of the coin where it goes wrong when you throw so much of your strategy towards that top lane counter pick working and then it gets ganked and dies a bunch yeah it's not gonna work dardock took over that lane completely just had like triple his regular jungle proximity up there that dardock hooney duo man mm -hmm. they are a terror here in the north american lcs let's hear from the owner of cloud nine jack to get his thoughts on his team's performance so far Thanks, guys. I'm here with Jack, the owner of Cloud9. Cloud9 having such a strong performance so far in the split, holding down second place in the standings. I have to ask, uh, what's it like to lose in the offseason? Uh, it, was, it was pretty rough getting the, the negative feedback and criticism from Reddit, but I totally understood where they were coming from because they didn't have uh, all the information that we had. Uh, it feels really good, though, to get on stage and be able to prove that we actually put together a better team than people thought. So with the negative negativity from Reddit and community alike, um, that aside, Coming into the split, what were your expectations like for this team and have they met them so far? Um, coming into the split, I felt really strong about how we would end up. Um, all of the players on the team had the correct mindset. Uh, they're very professionally minded. And what I mean by that is that they're passionate about learning. They're really curious on how they can make themselves better. Um, and they you know, give and receive criticism really well. So they had the right like boxes checked on, on a team that was going to learn well and perform well in the long term. Uh, it's really nice to see that in the short term, it's also come out positive. And I want to know, what were your first impressions on bringing Licorice in? Because when he first came out and when he was announced, people were hesitant on his performance. Um, Licorice specifically, we had a ton of scrims with him. We essentially uh, used him as a... Uh, e United was a team that we warmed up against almost every single weekend before summer split last year. So we saw a lot of reps with, with Licorice and how he played against Impact. So we knew what we were getting when we picked him up. So um, you know, all that information was not available to everybody out there. So they thought, oh my God, what, what is this team doing? They, they lost the off season. But the truth was, is we knew exactly what we were getting and we had high expectations from him. Now comparing this roster of Cloud9 with ones in the past, how strong is this team? Uh, this team in particular, I believe is the best suited um, with their mindset to do better than any team we've ever had uh, historically. So I have really high expectations. I think we're gonna do really well this year. Per, uh, perform performance has been outstanding so far in this split. Is this going to be the split where we see another Cloud9 banner go up in the studio? Uh, I, I, I'm not really so focused on NALCS split wins. It would be fantastic to have more, but I really want to see us come into Worlds with an entire year of working hard with the right mindset so that we can do well internationally. Excellent goal going for Wards. Good luck in the next game and back to the desk. Where's Thank you very much, Avali. Where's Twitter, Jack? Yeah. Twitter, <laughs> Jack had been talking so much game on Twitter, just rubbing it in everyone's face. Yeah. And then he has an image for, he's for every game. You can't be 100% flame he's all the time, I have a right? Little, little <laughs> you got to have a little bit of that redemption. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice contrast there, or uh, a, nice, uh, a nice way to explain the contrast of yeah. the information that the team was working with and that they came into the season with in terms of the way they made their decisions around picking up Licorice to what the community had uh, when evaluating this player at first glance. Yeah, I think they obviously had much more scrim knowledge in these teams, but that's also not to say that they didn't trade up in the scouting grounds draft so they could also pick a top laner to give themselves some insurance in case it didn't work out as well as they thought it would. So right. they definitely did their prep work, but I think he's also holding some of his cards still. So. Right, we'll get an opportunity to speak to 100 Thieves coach Coach Prawley later in the show, but I want to hear from Captain Flowers and Azale, who are going to be bringing you that matchup in just about 24 minutes. So, gentlemen, how are you doing today? 
Doing pretty good, Dash. Ah. Thank you very much. <laughs> For 100 Thieves, though, I'd like to see them shore up some of the issues that we've heard stem from in-game communication so far. Yeah, exactly. Medios had talked about this uh, quite a bit in his interview a couple weeks ago, uh, talking about the fact that the team felt even a little bit tilted, to use his words, that they weren't always on the same page, they weren't really lined up in who was going to be their in-game leader, who was going to be the shot caller. And you can see that carrying over to the performance on Summoner's Rift. You really need to have a cohesive strategy and everyone buying into that strategy to find success against the best teams. It's one of those things that when it's missing, you can really feel the yeah. impact of that not being there. And while some may point to Cloud9's Lucian pick last week as a red flag, it's important to note that Reaper's champion select was textbook C9 in the split so far. Exactly. Some people were going as far to call it you know, a disrespectful pick to pick Lucian against Huni. Oh, it's his pick. You can't do that. But this is what Cloud9 has been doing all split long. They've been going for top lane counter picks. They have put the confidence in Licorice to play these high variance, high octane carry matches. Matchups, you know, even last time against Huni, playing the Jace, he's brought out the, you know, the Kled, he's brought out uh, Camille and, and various other you know, carry picks. And sometimes it's just not going to work out. When you are playing carry versus carry, he's playing against who is, in my opinion, the best top later in the league, Huni. And Dardoch was up there so much and really did swing that matchup. So I don't think it's really any cause for concern for C9 just because it didn't work out this one time. Their opponent simply played better on top side of the map. Right, taking the Lucian into Huni. Just because the guy's known for the pick doesn't mean he owns the pick. We'll probably see some more of that kind of a matchup in the future, but that's what we're looking at for game one for now. Back to you, Dash. What are you guys' thoughts there? I mean, I pretty much mostly agree. On the side of 100 Thieves, though, it is very concerning when you have so many veterans. Too many cooks kind of comes up there where they're trying to find a play style and everyone has a different opinion, a play style that they've been playing their whole career, and it's hard to adjust so quickly. Yeah, I think 100 Thieves has some of the ingredients for a successful team, but uh, that doesn't mean it's always going to form up or that it will ever form up. So they kind of hit rock bottom with that long losing streak right before winning against CLG, and we'll see how that last week of practice went. Right, Mark, you talk about maybe too many cooks. Uh, one of the ways that that can manifest a lot of times is in the length of the game and the inability to close, right? If you're not on the same page, you're not actually moving around the map together, you're not taking advantage. Yeah, they have the longest average game time and the longest average win time. It speaks to the fact that they don't have a clear play style. Sometimes Meteos and uh, Aphromoo tag up for first blood, and that's great. But other than that, they pretty much just seem to default in this really slow games where finally their veteran experience kicks over and they can start winning these games through better decision-making. But that's not really a play-style choice, it feels yeah. like. Right, now I we'll think they're lucky to be 5-5, five and five, for yes. what it's worth. Lucky to yeah. be 5-5. Five and five. All right, interesting. So we'll see if the match has any effect on the standings, which it likely will as Cloud9 are sitting at second at uh, 8 and 200 Thieves, as Jat just mentioned, fifth at 5-5. Five and five. That leaves FlyQuest and TSM in sixth with CounterLogic Gaming and Optic Gaming tied for eight. Now, looking at those rankings, what are some of the teams you've pinned to either move up or down in the standings in the weeks to come? Well, one thing that definitely happened is Team Liquid being at six and four with that downward trajectory they've had very recently uh, is disappointing to see because it looked like they could pick up wins so easily early on in the season. Uh, but they fell on some hard times there with the C9 Echo Fox week where they could have solidified themselves as a top team. And then they also lost to Golden Guardians. So uh, speaking of rock bottom, that's it for this Team Liquid team. Um, so they have to get better. Yeah, and with that in mind, they are looking like they're trying to diversify their playbook a little bit where they took red side twice last week and gave counterpick to uh, impact which is something they don't do generally speaking and they tried to play up to that side and it wasn't really working out yeah and with that being said like I don't think that Team Liquid is going to be good, but if Team Liquid plays the style they did early on in the season where they're ganking bottom lane nonstop and trying to snowball through double lift, I think they'll win a lot more than 60% of their games, which is their current win rate. So that means even though they've lost three or four, I feel like they will trend up from here. Fair enough. What about the team tied with them in the standings? Clutch. I mean, you talk about teams lucky to Woo. be where they are. There was a, a week where it felt like, you know, Clutch should have gone 0-2, and they stole both of those wins just against TSM and Optic uh, two weeks ago. And then Blacklist versus TSM last week was actually pretty convincing. And one of the things that helped them you know, kind of secure and solidify their position in the rankings is Lyra on Skarner. He's so much more comfortable looking on this champion with a fast, clear speed, as opposed to some of the slower tanks that we've been seeing. It's really been great for them, as well as the fact that they're mid and bottom have generally been playing well, and top is not a problem, which was one of the concerns coming into the season. And I think that the two TSM wins, you see the TSM brand and you think impressive wins. You look at the TSM that's been playing this year, those are not impressive wins. Right. So, yes, Clutch Game is on the four-game winning streak. I don't expect them to be tied for third at the end of the split, 
which would make me think that they would trend downwards in future weeks. Lira being on Skarner is a band-aid on a really big problem right now because he hasn't looked good on any of the other junglers. Skarner's something you can hard farm with to get to the mid and late game where the team wants him to be, but he hasn't been able to reach that point on other champions. Yeah, three of those four wins coming on Skarner. You ban that away, what does this team look like? Maybe we'll find out today. Yeah. Let's talk about the team that's alone at the top. Echo Fox. I mean, obviously, they can't go any further yeah. up. Yeah. So you are maintaining <laughs> or going down. Uh, but with that said, I think you can expect them to maintain that dominance. Uh, with their win over Cloud9 last week, it pretty much solidified them as the team to beat in the LCS. Uh, they have such strengths that while they do have their own weaknesses, they're they're over able to overpower their opponents. Yeah, and I was always thinking that this team looked a lot like the 2016 version of Immortals with Huni in the top lane and Adrian in support. So we pulled some stats to kind of see exactly how that would rank up and as far as league ranking they are fairly similar to that 2016 immortal squad with a few differences obviously the 10 and 0 record and you kind of forget how dominant that team really was compare the difference of goal the 25 minutes between that squad and the fact that immortals got first blood in every single game God. up until this point in the split so yes echo fox is good, but by no means are they historically good like that Immortals team was back in spring of And the most important number to look at for me is the goal difference at 25, whereas that explodes for Immortals with their clean play and how decisive they were. Echo Fox, we've seen a lot of mid-game throws out of them, and that's why that number doesn't quite jump up to the crazy number it was before. Also a little bit slower of a meta, to be fair, but mm -hmm. uh, it is indicative of their play style where they make mistakes in the mid-game, and then they have to re-kind of focus down post 30 minutes. All right, fair enough. There you have it. The team at the top still looking good. When we we come back from break, we look at the win conditions for game one, and these two share their top lane tier list for the first 10 games played. As we go to commercial, let's listen on this week's mic check, which looks uh, behind the scenes of the 100 Thieves versus Counter Logic Gaming Game. Two games. Yeah, I think my yeah, voice tone is pretty low usually, so it's like hard to hear. He has such a deep voice, so masculine. Bard is better. I think Bard is a little better for zoning. Yeah. So stop Terry. Engage. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think so. Let's do it, baby. Can you back up? Yeah, I'm fine. Go, I can look at this guy. Yeah. Do you have any CC? Oh. Oh, nice try, nice try, nice try. Yeah, I can portal you right here. There's no words. They're not going top side. Ezra, no. I can try. Ezra, Z. Ezra, no. I can hide it. Ezra, top side. Ezra, top side. Don't flash, OK? Go, 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 go. I don't have jump for five. Got him. We can kill this guy too. Nice. Hey, get the tower, get the tower, get the tower, get the tower. They're gonna be walking up through the jungle right there. You can look. Go, 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 Okay. You guys want me to go lock it? I got it, I got it. Oh, 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 oh Top tower, okay? Come in. Come in. Pull in Bijas. If they have There's no words, no words. Watch the pink. Hug right, hug yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, hug wait, 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 wait. They're okay. on it, they're on it. I ult in. I have smite. I ult in. I think they base. I think they base. We should I just get it. Nice, take it slow. Watch it slow. Slow, slow, slow. We just have to rush it. Okay, we just have to start it. Let's go. Okay. They're gonna come. Five, 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 five. We have to defend our base after. All right, we need to go sign it now. Sign it now. Go, go. No, 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 no. They're gonna finish. Finish. Go, 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 go. Nice. Back up, back up, back up. Oh, back up, I can't go over the wall. Stay good, stay good. Bye, bye, bye. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Corky, Corky, Corky. Corky, Corky. Ezra on the pit, Ezra on the pit, Ezra on the pit. I'm dead, I'm dead. He's dead, he's dead. Nice. Corky, Corky, Corky. Corky. Nice. Yep. They lost. Oh. Alright. What a showing from 100 Thieves. They outplayed CLG and deserve this win. The best top laner in the NALCS has to be Huni. Huni because he can still play off meta picks and meta picks very well. Definitely Licorice because he's just 
crapping on people. The best top laner right now would have to be either Huni or Licorice. Sorry, Hanzer. The best uh, top laner of the NALCS has got to be Huni. Huni is the best top laner because I think he plays a lot of off meta champions like Yasuo, Gangplank, and Lucian and really makes them work. You don't get to play on SKT just by being okay. And on, honestly, he's trashing people on the top lane. Looks like I found some new analysts. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're about to jump into some new segments where we needed a little bit more space. Mm -hmm. so we moved out to the arena. Before we do so, if you're looking for the EULCS's post-game lobby, that has moved to the Twitch channel EULCS. In the meantime, we're going to jump right back into it, talking about top laners and tier lists. We heard from the fans themselves on who yep. they thought should top the table. Let's take a look at Mark and Jat's list. Hooney, no surprise. We both agree on Hooney, but I want to clarify real quick what this tier list is yes. for. It's performance through the first 10 games of the split. Not historically better, not better at the end of the split. It's through 10 games, who do we think has performed the best? And I think we can agree and like most of the audience, Hooney's the best player in the top lane right now, but I think that's where we start breaking apart. All right, so moving right past Tooney then, let's talk about the first major difference that I noticed on both your lists. Mark, you've got Hanser sitting in the second slot. Jat, you've got Licorice. Essentially flip-flopped in your rankings. I didn't hear any fans putting Hanser above Licorice, Mark. Yeah, well, that's because they're fans. Everyone in this audience hates Hanser. <laughs> what? It's, uh, Listen, it's, uh, Hanser clear. and Flame. I mean, that's, that's what that means. Yep. Hanser and Flame are uh, two players who don't get any help from their teams. And they have very limited champion pools in what they're actually winning with. So Hanser on GP is able to get a ton of leads, very low jungle proximity. Um, and they just play really well when he's on GP. Flame, much the same way, doesn't get much help. So they are basically the same player to me. Two and three is pretty interchangeable. Uh, and Licorice gets a ton of help from his team. Yeah, so if I just want to talk about why I have Hauntzer below Licorice and Flame is, yes, Hauntzer has been good on some picks, specifically uh, Gangplank, but Hauntzer is winless on all of his other champions. I want to talk really quickly about Licorice before we jump back to Hauntzer, though, right. uh, as to why I have Licorice so high. Statistically, he's actually at the top of pretty much everything. He has a higher forward percentage than Huni as far as map pressure, a higher CSD than Huni as far as that goes. He has the most kills for top laners. And a lot of people say it's because they're camping for Licorice. They're not. He only has the fifth highest jungle proximity of top laners in the North American LCS. So that's what puts him to me above Flame and Hauntzer. My one problem with Licorice is he has the highest death percentage of any top laner. So when things go wrong, it's basically on his back. We've seen the games where he goes boom, like the Lucian game. The Jace game, he was unable to team fight with it. And so while he does get a ton of help in the draft more than anyone else, arguably, when he, the team does falter and Jensen and the rest of the team are still playing okay, it's usually off Licorice. Yeah, but when we're talking about deaths, Hauntzer has more deaths than any other top laner Their in the Their games are longer. They play long <laughs> deaths. <laughs> so that's another reason that I would have Hauntzer down there. So yes, his GP is godlike. He's won four of his GP games. He's lost the six games where Hauntzer hasn't been on Gangplank. So he's overextending in lane and he applies a lot of pressure, but he's not smart or as smart about the way he applies that pressure, and as you mentioned, doesn't work very well with the team. Chicken or the egg argument a little bit here, because I would argue that TSM, as we said, has some of the worst teamwork in the league right now, and Hanser does get punished, understandably. He has the second highest goal difference at 10, and GP is the only champion he can hard carry enough on to win, is kind of what I'd say, whereas when he gets stuck on the Orn, stuck on some of these more team-focused champions, they've messed up dives around him, and Mike Young's feeding away some kills. All right, either way, both of them making it into the top four. Up. If we push our way down the list, something that jumps out to me as well is how highly ranked Solo is on your li list, Jad, as opposed to where he falls over here on Marks. Yeah, so for me, I think Solo does a lot more with less than other top laners in similar positions. He has one of the lowest jungle proximities in the league as far as how often they gank for him, but he's still the only top laner to lead his team in damage percentage. He has the fewest deaths of all top laners in the league, and they've actually won six of 10 of their games. So he's not the reason for them to be losing, uh, which I actually can't say about some of these other top laners, and he's had some pretty good games without help. And the reason I have him lower is because by most individual metrics, he's kind of far down that list in terms of CSD, XP differential, these kinds of things. And he has really low kill participation. Second lowest, the only person under him in most individual categories is Zig. And that's why I have a hard time bump bumping him too high up when it feels like he's more of an afterthought on his team. 
All right, one last guy I want to talk about here, Impact. This is a guy that, you know, on any other given month, we might be singing his praises and saying he's the best in the NALCS. Uh, but his entire history in this league has been one of peaks and valleys. You both kind of have him sitting in the middle to the bottom half right now. Yeah, you talk about the highs and the lows for him. Right now, he's somewhere on the lower end. We know that, like, in summer last year, he was struggling a ton, bounced back a fair amount. He looks better than then, but it's really not a great meta for him. He really does his best work on tanks and there's very few that are competitively viable right now and it feels like he's struggling to find his place on that team. Yeah, and I actually had him lower before I did a little bit more digging into this list because of the fact that he is not getting much pick priority and he's often playing tanks which are going to lose lane to other things and he still is involved in a fair number of early kills but all the other metrics, especially the recency bias that you tend to have on these lists with how he's looked in the last four games, put him kind of where he's at right now, which when you think before the season where you expected Impact to be, this is much lower, and it's because he hasn't been performing. Another big name that's pretty low on the list for both of you, Someday. And this is why we made sure to say that this is a performance-based list. Like, no way is Someday the eighth or ninth best top lane there in the league, but uh, 100 Thieves has really been struggling to find a way to get involved with him. We've seen synergy at points between Meteos and Ryu and Meteos and Aphromoo, but it doesn't feel like there's any synergy with his team, and he is getting just given counterpicks sometimes, but not winning hard enough, and not yeah. doing anything in these games. And a lot of times, NAR is kind of looked at this split as you play NAR well, you are a good top laner. Some days played more NAR than anyone else. He's played six NAR games. And he has the worst laning stats of all the NARs in the LCS. So for a player who should be skill checking against the rest of the league, and you expect based on the name brand recognition that he will beat them, he's actually losing to all of them, which is pretty damning for a player of his caliber and his history. Some thoughts on the top lane here through 10 games. Of course, we've still got eight more to go in the season. We'll track their progress throughout the split. I want to move on to some predictions. So feel free to boo these guys oh, if you man. disagree nope. uh, with any of the teams that they've chosen for the day. Throwing them up on the screen. I believe that you guys only differ in one prediction of the day. Wow, CLG Jack coming Go back. Go figure. I it's the CLG game of all games, Jack. Explain yourself. Clearly, I have not been punished enough for predicting CLG. Well, you masochism um, here. So I was watching COG's documentary series, and the confidence that Zix said they would 2-0 this week really struck me with how much the team has been looking to improve. They've mentioned a lot of things about how they've transitioned Huhi over to the primary shot caller and how it's been bad and how they've taken the losses, but they are seeing improvement. And I do think the Clutch Gaming is potentially a little over, uh, over their Overhyped a little Over -hyped bit. Overhyped at 6-4, and four, so I think it's a super close game, and it may as well throw one in there. And I can respect you going with your gut, because my gut was like, this feels narratively like the perfect time for TSM to find an upset win over Echo Fox. It was really close and last time. And then you time. didn't pick and them? And then you didn't and go I, for I your chickened gut. out, so that's you why I'm saying... You just explained to me why you would pick a team, I'm just and saying that when the upset happens, I should have listened to my gut. Ugh. Okay, well, that's fair. We'll yeah. make sure to make fun of you for it when it happens. But here in this second one, what's your reasoning behind Clutch over CLG? Uh, I think while, yes... Uh, Clutch Gaming are perhaps overperforming a little bit. We haven't really seen out anything out of CLG that inspires confidence. That you know that loss last week to Hundred Thieves was one of the weakest games we've seen in the LCS thus far. It was uh, uh, like a crazy situation where they're fighting in mid lane for three minutes straight and was not very impressive. So uh, while it's nice to watch the behind the scenes thing and say everything's turning around, until I see that on stage, I'm not going to be. It. That's game two. Game one is Hundred Thieves versus Cloud Nine. We spoke to Jack earlier. Let's now hear from Polly, Prolly rather, just a moment ago. We started off pretty strong. The players kind of just played their own game. And I think once we started to strive for more consistency, it kind of broke down like the natural play style of the team. So we had to like rebuild that in the last couple weeks, um, just trying to get more consistency in kind of our strategy. If we're just a team who doesn't have a like consistent play style, I think it becomes really risky going into like playoffs and further on. So breaking down how we play into steps is I think really important. I want to get some revenge on them. Last time, I think uh, we had a match that was not fun to watch. So hopefully this one will be a lot more entertaining and a lot more on our side of the street. I mean, I think everybody would like a more entertaining and fun game. Yes, please. <laughs> As I heard I a drone a or something gone. let out behind. Uh, we're going to do win conditions for this first game. We've got 100 Thieves versus Cloud9. Let's throw them up on the board. Mark, I believe you're first. Yes, you have given me C9 despite putting me on the 100 Thieves side, so I hope they don't throw anything at me. Just trying to confuse people. To C9, the thing man. that I need C9 to avoid is the j jungle uh, bot lane synergy. So watch out for Afromu. Watch out for Meteos over there. Don't let them sync up and you know pin Smoothie and Sneaky in their lane because that's where they tend to struggle as C9 when their bot lane is getting destroyed. So just make sure that doesn't happen. You have them beat most other places. You'll be good. 
Yeah, and for 100 Thieves, I do think they are the underdogs in this match, but I have two win conditions. It's make sure you're drafting enough initiation and also play through the bottom lane. So we mentioned at the top of the show how 100 Thieves plays the longest games in the LCS and has even longer win times. Those are sometimes stretched out because they have trouble finding fights. So if they can get to those points where they're able to find fights and Aphromoo is not behind, everything should technically work the way it's supposed to. With our, our last minute here, do you think after the loss suffered against uh, Echo Fox that Cloud9 might look to start week six here with a different strategy, perhaps moving away from the licorice counter picks and the attention up there? I would like to see them do it. They are definitively in second place. I understand battling for first last week, but you have some room here towards the second half of the season to start experimenting with different draft and team strategies. So I understand if you just want to win every game you possibly can, but if they want to start branching out a little bit now, right before a Point four hits and you lose control of the meta, this is a good time to do it. All right, that's going to do it for us. Time to watch some League of Legends, so we're going to toss over the casters to get us into game one of the day.